This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to retrieve input from the user at the keyboard. This has lots of uses, both practical and real world, in that you cannot constantly be assigning data in your programs. You need to be able to ask the user to enter data and have the program store the data that the user types at the keyboard. And in real world programs, you're not going to be assigning data all the time anyway. You're going to be getting input from the user. So learning how to do this is quite important. To get input from the user at the keyboard, we have to import a class called the scanner class. And importing involves writing a line of code at the beginning of the program, at the very top, above the public class, where you type the keyword import followed by the name of the class, in which case we want the scanner class. And notice I didn't just write import scanner, I wrote import java.util.scanner. java.util is a package where the scanner class is located. By putting classes in packages, we can use method names and other identifier names over and over again without causing any conflicts. So the different classes that make up the libraries of Java are all located in different packages, and the scanner class just happens to be located in java.util. Once we've imported the scanner class, we're ready to actually create a scanner object, and that's how we get input from the user. We create an object of the scanner class, and then use that to get the input. So to do that, we're going to declare a new object, and we'll call it input, and then we call the constructor for the scanner class. And what the constructor wants is a input object, in this case the keyboard, which is represented by system.in. You've seen how Java represents the screen by system.out. Well, the keyboard is represented by system.in. So by writing this line of code, scanner input equals new scanner system in, we're saying that we want to associate the object input with the keyboard. Now we're ready to get some data. So let's first create a integer variable number, and then let's retrieve that number from the keyboard. The way we do that is we write a method from the input object called nextInt. What happens is when the compiler comes across this line of code, when it sees nextInt, it stops the program and lets the user enter a number at the keyboard, press enter, and then at that point that input is assigned to the variable on the left hand side of the assignment statement. So we can verify that that works by having a system out line right here, where we'll just echo the number back out. So let's save and run this program and see what we get. So we compile it, cap 7 part 3.java, and then run it. I didn't put a prompt in here, so we're just going to enter a number. A prompt probably would have been a little bit better. So we type in 45, and then it goes back, the number is 45. Why don't we do this? Let's just go ahead and write a real simple little addition program. We're going to create two integer variables. Then we're going to, let's create a sum variable also to store the sum. Now let's prompt the user, systemout.print, enter the first number. Then get the number with input.nextint. Then we're going to prompt the user to enter the second number, number one gets the next integer entered, like so. Then we can compute the sum, number plus number one, and then we can write out system out print line. The sum is, I will put the numbers back up there, and then we can just delete this last line, like so. Let's save the program. Compile again, and then run it. So we'll do 23, the second number will be 56, and the sum is 79. We can work with floating point numbers just as easily as we work with integers simply by changing the method that we retrieve numbers with. So if I want to do a double addition program, all I've got to do is change my declaration to doubles and then change the method from next int to next double, like so. And that's all we have to do. Save the program. 
Well, let's compile and run it. We'll enter a 0.34 and 2.56, and it says the sum is 2.9. You can also mix data types using the input object just like you can in assignment. You just have to be careful. You can assign integer values to double variables using next int into a double, but you cannot assign next double inputs into an integer because of the loss of precision. So the same rules that apply to doing mixed math in Java also apply to entering numbers into variables in mixed ways. So you can put an integer into a double, but you can't put a double into an integer. So to review, the key to getting input from the user is to import the scanner class. Be sure to set up a input object. It doesn't have to be called input. That's just a variable name. But some object that is associated with system.in using the scanner class and its constructor, and then calling the appropriate method, either next int or next double, to retrieve the number from the keyboard. So that explains how to get numeric input from the keyboard. And in my next lesson, we're going to learn how to get string input from the keyboard.